right? So his teammate actually just died there. But look, you have two teammates right here. There's no reason for you to be looking in the same direction. If you're just way too focused on what happened here, there are potential enemies already coming around from this area of the map that could possibly flank you. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but the possibility of that happening is very high. And that's another unnecessary death that can be avoided. Right, and welcome back to another subscriber gameplay review where I react to your guys' gameplay to help you out. And I'll just put my input and analysis on things that you could possibly improve on. Now, if you guys haven't seen the previous videos, I definitely recommend that you check those out. They will be linked in the description down below to a playlist. Now, another thing that I do have to point out is that if you're submitting your gameplay, please just send me some average gameplay. Now, I know one of the episodes I did cover somebody who actually did really well, but it really occurred to me that, you know, showing you guys people who do well, it's not really helping people out. We want to help people who actually need the help. So please keep that in mind. I had to delete at least 10 submissions because people are giving me 30, 40 bomb gameplays where they're the top player in their game, or they just didn't follow the directions. People are sending me like super long videos with vlogs inside of it. People People are not following the directions i said unedited gameplay from start to the finish i want to be able to see that scoreboard at the very end as well as no commentary whatsoever follow the directions so that's all i ask and we'll be able to continue the series this way all right so anyways we have a very interesting video today so this person who submitted this gameplay we're about to watch uh his current kd ratio is a 1.07 kd and he's been playing Call of Duty since March of 2020. So that's literally like a couple months ago. And this is for PC. So we're blessed with some really great quality gameplay. He actually played COD Mobile when it released. And his reason for submission is actually quite interesting. He said he was actually one of the top players in mobile COD. But when I started playing COD on computer, I kept dying. And I felt that my movement around the map when engaging an enemy felt quite awkward and something felt off. Most of the time, my matches start off really well. But during mid game, I just keep I at least want to reach the level of some YouTubers I see online. Hope that as a more experienced player, you can give me some tips. So this guy was dominating on COD Mobile, it sounds like. Uh, but when he hopped on PC, it seemed like he was starting from scratch all over again. We're going to be trying to help out this guy today. We're going to see what needs to be done. All right, so let's get this thing going here. We're going to press play here. All right, so he's playing on Superstore. If you guys missed my breakdown on Superstore, it's uh, included with the MP5 class setup. Make sure to check that out. Link in the description. All right, so uh, I can tell right off the bat, he's a very defensive player. He's not rushing too hard, which is good. He's uh, pre-aiming. Okay, wait, hold on. That, you know, this is a really small little detail here. So notice how, like, he doesn't even look to his left. This is an area right here for enemies to go ahead and shoot you. So, you know, when you're traversing from one point of a map to another, always make sure that it's safe to pass from point A to point B before actually doing it. And as you can see, he kind of just, you know, went straight forward. He kind of tunnel visioned it. And you never want to do that. So that was a mistake right there. And, uh, you know, of course he got lucky because he didn't die. So I do want to point out another thing here is that instead of him going straight this way from where he came from over here, he actually went around this way, you know, and that's the safer route. I'm quite impressed that he did that. And uh, that's something that you guys should also do as well. So he's pre-aiming again. He's pre-aiming around those corners. He just wants to make sure that he has the upper hand in those gunfights should they happen. Now, one thing that I'm also noticing right off the bat that he's... A little too timid, too defensive. But I, I do like the fact that he's constantly moving forward, so that's a good thing. So he wasn't able to get the kill there because that tarp is protecting whoever is up there in those uh, shelf areas. So he's checking his back once again. And I think his teammate actually died, so let's... All right, so if we take a look at the minimap right here, he has a teammate here, and all of a sudden he disappears. So that should be his cue to direct his attention right here in this area, which he did, so that's good. And he's also checking his back. All right, so teammate's dealing over there with somebody shooting at him with a riot shield. Okay, so that's a pretty smart move. He went back here behind this checkout area to get some cover. So now he has a teammate behind him. His teammate actually moving forward to this area right here is an indicator that it's safe to go back to this area because this area is covered by his teammate. And if his teammate is still alive, obviously his back is also being watched. All right, so I feel like personally he stayed in this area for way too long. I would definitely push into their spawn or try to patrol it. 
and uh, unfortunately he got double teamed right there one other thing that i do notice is that he's using throwing knife you know there's nothing wrong with you know picking your preferred lethal but in my opinion unless you're really skilled with your aiming I would definitely switch this out for something like a Semtex or a C4, you know, something a little bit more useful as far as damage goes, because at least there's a blast radius when you toss a grenade or a C4 that has a higher chance of killing an enemy. Now, with a throwing knife, you have to be extremely accurate. That's something I would definitely change right there. All right, so he's pre-aiming in this direction because he knows that there's no teammates here, so he just wants to be cautious. So he's pre-aiming, going around those corners. All right, so I did see an enemy over there. So he backs up a little bit. Okay. Before this play plays out, let's go back just a little bit here. We clearly see that there's an enemy right there, and 100% the enemy does see him as well. So, in this situation, I would not actually retreat back here. I would push into this area right here just to get a flank. You know, the enemy is expecting him to be in this immediate area right here. The enemy could actually pop in from here or pop in from this area. So there's a 50-50 chance that you would actually be able to predict where he's coming in from. Now, if I were to immediately flank around this way and rush the opponent right here, that would give me a good chance of at least catching him if he decides to go this way and I would be able to flank him. Or if he decides to push in through here, he would meet me then over there and I would already be pre-aimed and ready to take him out. Your chances of winning that gunfight are a lot higher versus him basically just making you guess, is he coming in from here or is he gonna come in from here? So uh, that would be just my little input right there. So let's see uh, how this plays out and what he does. So he's checking that line of sight, as I said earlier, because he doesn't know. Is he coming from there or here? So the opponent tries to sneak up on him, and he does come in from this angle. And he was actually able to get the kill, so that's good. Now, uh, one thing that I also do have to point out is earlier I said he plays rather defensive and a little too timid. So this is a great example of him playing too timid, you know, like he just got a kill and I'm looking at that mini map. You've got a bunch of teammates that are actually already in this area and there's no action happening. So there's really no reason to be, you know, pre-aiming down lines of sight like this while you're walking. It's just unnecessary in my opinion. And as you can see, uh, he actually did check his mini map momentarily, which is actually pretty smart uh, just to verify. I'm trying to right there. So as you can see, like I said earlier, there are teammates in this immediate area there is no real reason for him to just be that defensive and timid while approaching certain areas so i think he could be a little bit more aggressive and this is actually the first time i'm uh, suggesting for somebody to be a little bit more aggressive so i'm actually hearing a lot of enemy footsteps coming from this direction right here you hear that and if i pause it in that exact moment wait right there there's an enemy right there, and I did say I heard some footsteps coming from this direction. I'm not sure if he's wearing a headset or not, so that could be the issue of why he just didn't notice this enemy that was approaching around this corner. Because it would have been an easy kill. Now, as you can see, he turns around last second. It was a pretty messy kill, but he did get the kill nonetheless. But that could have been done a little bit more cleanly. So there's a lot of action going on in this area right here. That's why he's pre-aiming. Now, I wouldn't personally stay in this area again once more because... All his teammates are over here and he's basically in the enemy spawn by himself and he's now caught in a situation where he's sitting in the corner which is not a good position because you could get attacked from multiple angles at this point from uh, either this area, this area, or this area. So there's just way too many factors. I would have just continued pushing into this area right here where the checkout area is so that I can at least gatekeep the middle area of the map and pick off enemies that are coming in from this area. From that position, you are minimizing the amount of variables that you could actually die. And that's something you have to think about as well when you're playing the game. Is the area I'm in, is it a good situation and position for me? So he does pick up a good little double kill there, but you know, like I said earlier, it's very dangerous because you're in their spawn right now. They could be spawning in from anywhere. And as you can see, he's already getting shot. And that is the result of that. Yes, you will pick up a few kills, but you know, as you can see, it's it's not really going to last too long. You know, you want to stay on a streak as long as you possibly can. Also, if he's playing stealthy, it also wouldn't be a, a bad idea to use dead silence as well with the munitions box. So he retreats, somebody threw a grenade. 
So here's another example of just like looking into areas where you don't really need to be looking. He has all his teammates here in this area clearly and he's pre-aiming in an area where there are likely no enemies. You know there's really no reason to waste your time in the game to be pre-aiming into these areas when there's no action going on. Just to help uh, put some perspective in what I'm talking about because I may not be explaining this as clearly as I should but you know when I was younger I used to play a lot of chess and something that my coach used to tell me all the time was there are a bunch of pieces on the board that you can move but if you're going to move a piece make sure that it contributes to you winning the game there has to be a reason why you're doing it you know because if you're just moving a piece just to move it and there's no real reason for doing it and it just actually doesn't benefit you in the long run you actually just wasted your move and you're allowing the enemy a chance to go ahead and win that game so the same thing applies in call of duty you know as funny as it sounds that's how i approach the game and that's why i say make every move count so this is just an example right here of just wasting a move you know you're wasting your time you could have used this time to go ahead and advance forward and try to kill whoever's up here or you know put yourself in a better situation now somebody's behind him again i hear those footsteps better turn around and that was the result of that yeah there has to be some sort of like audio issues with this person maybe he's not using a headset like i said before okay he should be he should be directing his attention to this area right here because you know he has a lot of teammates that are in this area and there, again there's no action happening there so you always want to keep your eyes on areas that your teammates are not looking at all right so his teammate actually just died there but look you have two teammates right here there's no reason for you to be looking in the same direction i've said this before if you're doing that you're just going to be competing for kills at that point now what i'm talking about is if you're just way too focused on what happened here there are potential enemies already coming around from this area of the map that could possibly flank you i'm not saying it's going to happen but the possibility of that happening is very high and that's another unnecessary death that can be avoided all right, he has on Ghost. The enemy team actually just called in a UAV. So since he has Ghost, he can actually keep going around and flanking. All right, so he's pre-aiming. Now he's at the mid area of the map. Okay, I would have continued pushing around this way and then made it to this area right here because I know that when they spawn in in this area, I could actually cut them off from advancing to the mid part of the map area. Because if you're just posted up in this area right here, the enemies that are po the enemies that are camping on the top of the shelves here could actually kill you because they've got that height advantage. And at the same time, you could actually get flanked from behind. So let's just go ahead and uh, keep playing the gameplay here. You know, I'm sorry if I'm pausing too much. But see, exactly. That's exactly what I was just talking about. He's being shot from somebody who's camping up there in the shelves area. And now they're onto him. So he's got to watch his back now. Let's see what he does in this situation. They're definitely trying to kill him. So he's pulling out his uh, pistol. I'm not really sure, you know, what that does in that situation. See how the enemy just keeps pushing him backwards. You want to do the opposite. You want to keep the enemies at bay. And that's exactly what I mean in my videos when I see I'm doing this to keep the enemies at bay. I don't want them to advance. So I'm basically gatekeeping. If they want to move up, they're going to have to deal with me. You're pretty much at a standoff in this situation. So he does pick up a good kill there. Now he's going to check his right. I hear some footsteps behind him. He's chasing him. All right. So he wants to back up here just to get a better position. That's not the enemy that was behind him. 100% he's pursuing okay so he's reloading so he noticed that he was out of ammo so that's pretty good yeah and that was the result of that you know you have to make sure that you're taking care of the enemies who are approaching you right away don't give them a chance to position themselves or else you're going to be at a severe disadvantage so in this situation Instead of going back to the area where you died and you know for a fact that there's enemies, I would have just actually went upstairs for a good vantage point to see where they're at. You know, maybe I can assess if it's actually worth trying to go against these guys right now. And he's clearly outnumbered and this is not a good area for him to be in. He's definitely going to get killed if I, uh, you know, predict this correctly, which actually just happened. See, he got outnumbered right there. You know, when you're in that kind of situation, look at your options you know you, you want to get some height advantage you want to get a good vantage point so going upstairs would have been a good idea see again so this is another example of him being pushed back you know he needs to have more confidence when he's playing and this is the result he's being pushed back into his own spawn and this is not going to help you do good in the game 
And as you can see here, the enemies are clearly in their spawn. They're just kind of pushing his whole team. And now the spawns have flipped because the enemies just pushed the spawn too deep. Let's see where he goes. Pre-aim that. I hear footsteps. Good kill. He's pre-aiming there just to make sure no one's going down that line of sight. Yep, keep pushing forward. That's good. So this is interesting. He can't find any enemies. He probably checked that scoreboard because he's wondering, did people leave the game? Which is exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so now he's at a good position to flank. So there's some gunfire going on to his right. He wants to pick up this guy right here that he hears. Good kill. He's going to keep pushing forward to make sure that the enemy is clear. He's checking the mid area of the map. Okay. I would, I, would, I would go back to this area, honestly, because like I said earlier, when you're in this specific area of Superstore, the variables are just a lot higher where you could get shot from. Whereas if you stayed over here on the outskirt of the map, there's really only one area and that would be their spawn or this little hallway right here that they can come in and attack you from. So he does see someone once again here on the shelves. I would just get out of this area and just, you know, keep sticking to the outskirts of the map, keep flanking. Keep doing what you were doing to survive. There's somebody that slid there. Just pre-aim. Pre-aim right here. Wait for him to come to you. Let him make the first move. He did get the kill there, but of course, again, it was messy. It could have been cleaned up. There's somebody right behind him. There is a tank going after him. All right, and that's the end of the match. Okay, so he ended up with 11 kills and 7 deaths. So not too bad he didn't do bad and he didn't do too good one thing i will say that i'm impressed with is the fact that he has really good awareness of pre-aiming and his movement his sliding looks really good and just a good overall awareness of what to do in situations when people see you i like the fact that he noticed those made the adjustments to his positioning and he retreated but at the same time he played a little bit too timid you need to have a little bit more confidence play a little bit more aggressive not too aggressive and i think you will do just fine you will do so much better and always try to stick to the outskirts of the map don't go to the middle of the map and try to anchor in that area because always remember as a rule of thumb whenever you're in an area think about the different variables of the factors and areas that you can get shot from am i in a good position right now am i going to get shot from this angle that angle and remember to keep an eye on that mini map because you were pre-aiming in areas that just it didn't matter you know you were kind of wasting your time doing Doing that because you had teammates in that area already so putting your attention in that direction was actually kind of a waste and you could have gotten flanked in some situations and killed and guys if you're watching this video make sure to leave comments down below on what he can personally improve on keep them positive please make sure to leave a like on this video if you want this series to continue and of course make sure to subscribe around here we're literally almost at 100,000 subscribers and I can't thank you guys enough for the support I really appreciate it and I hope you have a good day I'll see you guys in the next video peace